guys, welcome to another 10 minute tutorial. We're going to recreate the first video effect you just saw. Quite trippy, I quite like it, I hope you do too. Uh, if you're interested in any of the other ones, experiment yourself or head over to my Patreon page, I do have one, sign up and download them. Anyways, let's uh, dive right into it and let's start by dragging in a new composition into the edit timeline. Drag it out a bit to make it a bit longer and then let's head over to the Fusion tab where we will add in a Shape 3D node, like so. Let's display that in Viewport 1 and let's switch the lights on there. Alright, let's change the shape to Sphere and zoom out a bit and let's play with the angle a bit. I want to have just a bit of the Sphere, just a nice little slice. And then I also want to change the latitude i.e. where does it start and end. So you can see what happens there, but let's add in a bunch of expressions there for the start and end point. And let's type in time times three between brackets for the first one. The other one, same thing, but then add 240, i.e. 240 degrees. And you can see what's happening there. It's animated, but I wanna go one step further and add a bit to the first expression so that it will get longer and shorter as time moves on. So you can see the expression on the screen. There we go. Uh, it may not be as easy to see on the screen right now on YouTube, but it definitely gets longer and shorter as it goes on, which gives a more interesting effect later on. But I also want to change the subdivisions there and really dial it down to one for each, for the base and the height and you get a sort of a different type of effect, but play around with it. Next one up, I'm going to add a bit of rotation. So I put an expression there as well, very simple, minus time. And you can see now it's rotating over the Y axis and I do the same for the Z axis, but a bit faster and do minus time, time times three. There we go. And that's us done really with the shape 3D itself. Very simple. So now we're getting into the meat of the Tutorial, let's add in a duplicate 3D. And again, in the viewport, I'm switching on the lighting. And change the copies to 4 and the Z rotation to 90. And you can see what's happening there. And already it looks pretty interesting, but not, we're not quite there yet. So what we will do now is basically add in another duplicate 3D node. So it will basically duplicate the duplication we already had. How awesome is that? So let's set this one to six. So we've got six copies. And again, we're playing around with the set rotation, make it 60. And now you can already see that we're very close to the result we had in the video. So it's really extremely powerful, this duplicate 3D business. And I would urge you guys to really play around with it. So let's pipe this into a merge 3D and we'll add in a couple of lights. So we'll start with a bit of an ambery type one. And let's position that properly. Well, properly the way I like it. There, a bit behind and another one. And we'll hook it into the merge 3D as well. And let's make that one, uh, let's posi position it first and let's make it blue. There we go. And of course you can do it to your liking. I'm adding a bit of ambient light as well to give it just a touch more light. But I'm not overdoing it because I like the orange and blue or the amber and blue in there. So the next thing we want to do is uh, add a bit of a material to the shape 3D. So we're going to add in a blin material node, pipe it in there and we keep it very simple, standard settings. What I want to use the node for really is to add in uh, some bump mapping. So let's start by setting it to discontinuous and invert it and scale it up a bit to something like four and a half and crank up the detail. Then we pump, pipe it into a bump map and that will go into the bump map input, input of the blind tool. Then we increase the height scale a bit and there you can see what's happening. Again, do it to your own liking. And next one up, reflect node. I want to have some reflection in there. 
and I pipe the same fast noise into a sphere map and then from the sphere map into the color input of the reflection. And then we just need to tweak the settings a bit, increase the phase on strength and decrease the glancing strength. Again, do it to your own liking, but I think this looks pretty good. So we're nearly there already. I told you guys it would be a very quick tutorial. So let's add in a camera. And let's display that. And in the camera itself, let's change the Z translation. And we pull it out a bit to something like seven. And then we add in a renderer, set it to OpenGL and enable the lighting. Now I want to get rid of my transparent background. I will struggle with that in the Resolve. Not as easy as Fusion standalone. And that is looking pretty good. Nearly there. So I do want to play around with the accumulation effect, i.e. the depth of field a bit. But before I do so, let's have a look at the focal plane, which will determine what's in focus and what not. So let's display that like so, and you can see it's not quite at the right spot. So let's add an expression or pick whip the Z translation. Then let's offset it a bit, minus 0 0.5. There we go, it's looking better. And then back to the renderer 3D and let's enable the accumulation effect. And there you can see a slight change. However, as I wanna keep things speedy for now, I'm switching it back off. I'll change the transparency to quick sort. But more importantly, let's add in a bit of motion blur. We'll leave it at the defaults for now. And you can see there is a difference and that really will help to sell the effect. Finally, we'll add in a soft glow and we'll up the threshold a bit, lower the gain a bit. And I think that is looking pretty good. Now the very last thing we need to do is of course to pipe in the soft glow into the media out to be able to see the results in the edit page. And that looks fine. So really that was all there was uh, to it for this tutorial. However, let me just share a few more things, right? Because, you know, the lesson here is to play around with the settings. For instance, if we change the expression a tiny bit, you can see that really will well, maybe not drastically, but it really will alter the whole look and feel. And let's change the other expression again. Quite a significant impact to the overall feel. And of course, in the duplicate itself, just as an example, change the set rotation a bit. And again, that looks already quite, quite different. And a time offset, and now it looks maybe a bit more messy, but also maybe a bit more interesting. I really, really play around with it. Now, as said before, uh, the other examples can be downloaded from my Patreon page. But of course, if you don't want to sign up to my Patreon page, and that's absolutely fine. Um, I can give you uh, a bit of an insight for one of the examples I uh, make use of a torus shape. And really, in general, play around with it. And I'm sure you guys will come up with some great, great stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this very short tutorial and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye.